You don't get out much, do you, buddy? Look at that, surprisingly bright, sunny, and cold. Oh, all right, guys, minus 15 Celsius today, and we did have a bit of sunshine, but that's a problem because we're filming on a 1960s 35 millimeter M42 lens, and I don't have any kind of ND filter for this lens. So back into the garage with you. That's where we're going. Back into the garage. See, I thought I could feel a little bit of warmth from that sun, but at minus 15 Celsius, not a chance. Come on, Gage. Whew. Oh, did you see that weird flare when we shut the door? Where did it go? Uh, it was there. Just sitting here at the computer, kind of bored, looking at lenses, vintage lenses. And that reminded me that I have some really old manual M42 stuff in my lens cupboard over there, which I haven't used in years. And one of the lenses that I pulled out of there is a 35 millimeter f2.8, which is what I've stuck on the Sony ZV-E1 right here. Look at that. Uh, Okay, in the background. Look at the sharpness of this old lens. Do you guys know what I paid for this lens? I should show you the lens. So here we have our old 35 millimeter M42 lens mounted and I just wanted to show you guys it is on the gimbal. It does balance. We've got to use an adapter on our e-mount cameras but that's okay. It's still a pretty light setup. This this lens probably only weighs 250 grams, maybe less than that. It's, it's very light, even though it's all metal. It's an all metal lens. And look at this. Look at how easy this focus ring turns. It's like no pressure at all. I've never heard of the brand before, Dimensions. And I got a set of two lenses, this 35 millimeter and a 135. And these are old. These have to be lenses from the 60s, guys. I paid a whopping $5 a piece <laughs> for these two lenses. So what I want to do tomorrow is take this lens and play with it and see what kind of light flares we can get when we're outside, you know, in the woods uh, with the sun. I've done some photography with the 135 lens. I actually did a little bit of photography with this one as well. They're fully manual lenses. And I was impressed with the photography, but I never had any reason to use them on video cameras. Now that we own the ZV-E1, there's a whole new possibility of testing this old stuff in video mode. So let's do it. See that flare right there? Just moved its way across. So I'm just out in the garage gonna do some tinkering and I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a channel update. A lot of stuff has happened in the last week. Got cold, got snowy. Um, I took out some of my old vintage lenses and that's what I want to do this winter moving forward when we have a little bit of time is I want to get creative with this new Sony ZV-E1 camera and play with some of the old lenses that I bought you know up to 15 years ago when I first got into the DSLR stuff with my cameras I bought a lot of manual focus lenses that 
they were cheap and fun to play with. You know, lenses from the 1960s, uh, M42 mount, $35 a lens, or <laughs> the lens we're shooting on right now, five bucks. <laughs> so getting this new camera to play with video is kind of sparked my interest in those old lenses, which have sat in the cupboard for a long time. I know some of you guys are going to say, why did you buy the latest and greatest autofocusing system uh, in this camera and then stick a $5 lens on it and film in manual? Well, you know what? That's just the joy of being able to do both. So when we want to use uh, the latest and greatest autofocus, we'll just simply put on our new Rokinon 12 millimeter lens that I've been doing all my vlogging on. And it's great. It's fantastic. That thing will track your eye. I 100% have faith that it is not missing a beat in autofocus. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge playing with these old manual focus lenses, especially when we use our new gimbal, which, by the way, is tracking me right now. It's such a cool feature, guys. That uh, gimbal for that feature alone is worth, you know, the 370 bucks we paid for it. I have gotten used to uh, mounting and balancing this gimbal, so I'm happy with that as well, walking around. I was having some issues uh, with the lens with it being tilted, but now we know how to reset that as well. If we push the menu button five times, it will re-center the gimbal, and that solved that issue. So I haven't had any problems. Uh, if there were any issues, it was this guy right here, I think. It wasn't the technology, it was learning to use the technology. So moving forward with these lenses, I've had to purchase... Th there is something cool that I bought that um, I was kind of torn, guys, between buying a new lens... Uh, for birding, which we need to do because I'm still using my old A-mount glass. And on this camera, we, of course, have uh, an AI feature uh, which basically can detect the bird's eyes. But it only works with actual lenses made for E-mount. If we have to use an adapter and use some of my old lenses, it's weird. The, the AI processing unit will work for photography. So we can focus on a bird's eye using photography. It'll automatically go to the bird's eye. But as soon as you put it in video, for some reason, I don't know why, none of those features work in video. So there goes Gary having to drop $2,000 on a new lens when I want to make video recordings of birds and distant animals and things like that, which we do all the time on this channel. You guys, nature-wise, you know that I'm, you know, I, it doesn't have to be a bird. It can be a pine marten. It could be... A fisher, it could be a coyote running across the field. I want the camera to track the eye. And this camera can do all of that. It just can't do it with my old lenses. So I think it's time after 10 years that I'm going to have to drop some money and get a proper Sony 200 to 600 lens. But I'm going to wait until the spring to do that. And we're going to buy a used one. So if you guys, any donations that you guys are giving to the channel, uh, those of you that are supporting the channel, that's probably going to be the next big thing that I put the money towards is a newer lens for our wildlife outings and things like that okay now I did spend some of my money on something else there was one other thing that I wanted to maybe do some videos on this winter which is um, trying to get anamorphic style uh, cinematography some of you are like oh I don't even know what that is think of your favorite movies from the 1970s early 80s Star Wars and things like that they were filmed in an ultra wide it's called anamorphic. Um, lenses were used that had, you know, different features than, than these lenses that we use in modern times. They get a lot more flare on the lights, flare that will go right across the entire screen. So I looked at purchasing an anamorphic lens. I reached out to these companies, all of them saying, here's what we do. Here's our playlist of 350 photography videos, review videos that we've made. You know, we have 30,000 subscribers. Does anybody want to support the channel? Send us some gear. Nobody got back to us, so I just really couldn't justify dropping $1,500 on one of those lenses when we own all kinds of gear, 35 millimeter lens on here right now, um, that can almost do the same thing as the anamorphic lens, almost. This has some great, uh, feet, like, what's the word, characteristics. This lens has some great characteristics to it. The bokeh is not completely oval. It flares when there's lights in the background, but it's very sharp. And one thing that we can do to add some anamorphic features is we can get a filter. Uh, there's a company 
called uh, Vid Atlantic that makes Sinomorph lenses. It's basically just a, a filter that goes on the end. Uh, it adds a, an oval aperture to the front of the lens. And in that, there is a little strip of almost like fishing line, okay? And they come in different colors. And that will add flares in whatever color you choose. It will add some cool um, blooming and things like that, reflective effects. So I dropped $200 on a set of those filters, um, some step-up rings, step-down rings, and what else did I get? Oh, Black Pro Mist filters. I bought two of those. We're going we're gonna to do some creative stuff. And we didn't have to spend $1,500 on a new anamorphic lens. We're going to cheat. We're going to fake anamorphic because the ZV-E1 can also add the black bars while we're filming. Now, it's not going to be a full stretched out wide as we want to go. But our new lens, like I mentioned to you guys, it's a 12 millimeter APS-C lens, which is super wide. And when we put it on this camera, uh, it's actually probably by the time we zoom into it, it's probably about a 20, 20 wide. And if we add the black bars, we can fake anamorphic with that, guys. So that's what I'm I'm going to do this winter is some creative projects like that. Filming-wise, I want to write some projects, some stories. I just feel like I haven't been creative enough. And this is supposed to be my hobby channel. And here I am doing all these things that are really not fun. <laughs> I'm reviewing products that I don't even want or like or, you know, I get tired of the Bigfoot thing because especially this time of year, I joined the Nipissing Naturalists Club this year for the first time ever. Um, so they do, they have a bird watching section and uh, they set up meetings and outings and you can also get reports on cool, cool, rare bird sightings in our area. And they actually had on the site yesterday that there was a hawk owl, I believe it was, out uh, in the Nosbensing area, which is half an hour, 40 minute drive from here. So I may actually take a drive and go look for this owl. Somebody posted they did get a good picture of it. But joining this naturalist club, there will be all kinds of outdoor meetings. They will they will talk about uh, things that are going on in the city for environmental, conservation-wise. They do bird outings, things like that. Guys, it costs $20 for me to join. And I recommend you guys, if you have a club in your area, join to support them because they're all non-for-profit, right? Um, and then it cost me a whopping $5 to join the Birders Club within the Naturalist Club. And the best part was that when I paid for it through e-transfer, I used my wife's account. <laughs> so it didn't even cost me 25 bucks. So that's for all the guys out there. Do that to your wife. She'll really appreciate that. I'm sure I'll hear about it when she actually checks her bill and sees that that's on there. She'll be like, what is this? <laughs> I'll say it was a Christmas present for me. <laughs> So if you have a, a soft spot in your heart for nature and photography and the things that we do in this channel, then, you know, you have to kind of support these clubs. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm educated in that area. They do have speakers. I'll, I will get something out of it by, you know, I haven't been in school for 15 years. I haven't taught at the school for four years. So I'm kind of out of the loop and this will get me back into the conservation side of things and maybe make some new friends along the way, right? I, I feel I have skills that Gary's not using, and the older I get, the more into retirement I step. Um, I want to do things that are important to me, and the naturalist and the ecologist side of me wants to spend that time in nature and passing that on to future generations. So the first step is to join these clubs, go to some of the outings, meet people, and just go from there. So, I've got to go do some fixing of stuff. Um, I'm pretty much the only guy qualified in this house to put anything on the wall level. And that's, I'm, I'm saying that because I actually want it to be level. <laughs> so, I know my jobs around here and it's to take out the garbage. And the garbage is full. And it's full because I filled it. Nobody else would fill it. And, uh fix things. Those are my two jobs. Well, I guess I have a third job, which is walk Mr. Gage because nobody else likes to go in the swamp and he doesn't like walking on the road. He likes walking in the swamp just like you guys. So those are my chores and I've got to go get at it. This is our update and I'll talk to you guys soon.